going to take a look at the video. A lot of the damage done because of Super Typhoon Haiyan was the storm surge, similar to Katrina and the Gulf Coast. Let's talk more about how unique the storm surge was with this Super Typhoon. Yeah, there was a tremendous amount of surge with this storm, and it was not only a function, Michael, of how intense the storm was, and this was really on the far end of our experience with tropical cyclones, but it was also the geography in the Philippines. Yeah, a storm surge is a lot like real estate's location, location, location. In the case of Haiyan, it wasn't about the size of the storm, it was about where it made landfall. It was just to the south here of Leyte Gulf and San Pedro Bay, and that allowed the water to funnel up and channel into the bay here, Carl. You can see the strongest winds just to the south. It didn't matter, though, because that water, once it gets in there, like a catcher's mitt, it's hard to get out. It gets jammed into those bays and into those inlets. Exactly right, and we've got some of the video of some of the storm surge damage, and the damage was just complete across very large swaths there in Tacloban. Unbelievable destruction. And we want to talk a little bit about the force of water and why it is that water can do so much damage. So we'll take a look here at how much water weighs. A typical bathtub holds 330 pounds of water. One cubic yard of water, so that's a box that's three feet by three feet, weighs approximately one ton. That's remarkable. It's far more than you could lift. That's exactly right. And look at this, a 20 foot storm surge. If you calculate that out on a one acre area of ground is about 34,000 tons and that's bulldozing along the coast. Yeah, and that weight is the equivalent of a smallish cargo ship. So imagine the force, the weight of a cargo ship coming onto one acre of ground. That gives you an idea of how there's so much power that's running into these homes. An interesting thing about the Western Pacific is they get a lot of storms and they get them all year round and it's because the water temperatures remain relatively warm throughout the year from January through December. So they actually don't have a hurricane season. Their hurricane season is all year long. Take a look at these uh, ocean temperatures, Carl. Yeah, there's a huge repository of warm water, much more than what we see in the Atlantic. And even though it does get a little bit colder, obviously, in the northern latitudes in the wintertime in the Pacific Ocean, you've got a shift that occurs, but there's still an awful lot of warm water out there, and that's why we're still able to get the storms year round. Yeah, so here's the Philippines. You can see the warm waters is indicated by the orange colors extending to the east. So plenty of ocean fuel. It's the water temperatures, the warm water uh, that fuels these systems. And we also have a unique uh, trigger that we call the monsoon trough that also is very unique to this part of the world. That's exactly right. We do see a monsoon trough in the Atlantic Basin, but it's much more pronounced in this part of the world. And what's happening along that monsoon trough is you've got winds that are coming out of different directions. And what that does is it creates a pre-existing area of spin in the atmosphere. And that is what allows these things to get going. So you have these uh, disturbances, these systems that are moving toward the west from east to west. And as they hit this monsoon trough, they acquire a spin. And that's where we see the majority of the storms form. Over 80% of storms form within this monsoon trough. Carl. And so the very strongest tropical cyclones, and tropical cyclone is an umbrella term for all of these storms, typhoons, cyclones, and hurricanes, the very strongest of them have formed in this part of the world. That's exactly right.